rational expressions. They can be very, very complicated, okay? Or they can not be so complicated. But basically what it means is I'm gonna have a fraction, all right? Because that's the word rational right there, right there, that tells me it's gonna be a fraction. But then they've got this word complex, which means it's gonna be a fraction in my numerator and or another fraction in the denominator. So the problems are gonna kind of be kind of large, okay? Um, Let's do something like this. Let's say that we had a one over X plus a Y over an X squared, and that's all in the numerator. And then there's the big, huge fraction bar. So this is all the numerator. And then down here, I might have something like a one over a Y plus an X over a Y squared. Okay, so that's what one of these things look like. Everything up here, is the numerator, right? Everything down here is the denominator. All right, and then the line there in the middle is the main fraction bar. Now, I put actually a lot of fractions in that example. Like I put a fraction in each location. All right, I don't have to do that. There could be a fraction here, but then not a fraction here, maybe just an X squared. And then even maybe no fractions down here, it's still a complex rational expression because I've got one fractions in the numerator. So I don't have to have them in all four spots. I just have to have a fraction somewhere, either in the top or in the bottom, okay? Now, so that's what they basically look like, okay? Um, now, the method that we're gonna use to simplify this is called the least common denominator method, okay? So we're gonna do the least common denominator method. We're gonna multiply through by the least common denominator, okay? And like this least common denominator thing, that's how I get rid of all fractions anyway, okay? That, I mean, that gets rid of fractions and we don't want fractions. We wanna keep it as simple as possible, okay? So let's just kind of put um, it's, rid of fraction. Now it doesn't get rid of all of them, but what it gets rid of is it gets rid of the fraction that's in the numerator. It'll get rid of the fractions that are in the denominator, okay? Now, while those kind of problems are obvious that it's a rational expression. Ooh, why do I not have, oh, there it is. Okay, so this is obvious that it's a complex rational expression because you can clearly see those fractions. All right, however, what's gonna happen, especially in my math lab, is they're going to do ones that look like maybe say a seven X to the negative two plus an eight Y to the negative three all over say a two X to the negative four minus a seven y to the negative eight, okay? Now, they're gonna do these negative exponents. They're gonna give you problems that look like this. And at first glance, then you're gonna go, oh, well, that's not a complex rational expression because there's no fractions. You don't see a fraction here or here. You don't see a fraction here. You don't see one here. So initially, no, it's not. However, they're gonna want you to remember your laws of exponents and rewrite that. If you use laws of exponents and you rewrite it, then you create a complex rational expression, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use my laws of exponents. All right, so what our laws of exponents, basically we're just gonna focus on one of them. All right, it's going to say what? We take any variable, with a negative exponent and we move it to the opposite location. All right, we leave coefficients alone. All right, so this X to the negative two, I can legally move that to the bottom and make it positive, the, the exponent positive. All right, I can take this Y to the negative third, move it to the bottom and make it positive. All right, same thing here. I can take this, leave the two alone, move the X to the negative four to the bottom, make it positive. Leave the so what I'm gonna do now, the you gotta be careful. Yes, we're gonna take this base and this exponent, we're gonna move it to the bottom and make it 
positive, but I don't want to move it all the way to the bottom down here. I want to create a fraction just right here on the top. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the seven in the top. I'm going to move the x squared to the bottom. That's going to create the complex fraction. Okay, right here, I'm going to leave the eight in the numerator because coefficients get left alone. And then I'm going to do the y to the positive third in the bottom. So basically, when they give you a problem like this, you have to create that complex rational expression. So the two is going to stay in the top here. The x to the fourth is going to go to the bottom and become positive. The seven will stay in the top. The y to the negative eight will go to the bottom and the eight will become positive. All right, so once I apply the laws of exponents to each one of those, then now I've got four fractions, I've got my complex fraction. So then, you know, we'll use the LCD method and then we will go from there, okay? So these are basically the two different types of complex rational expressions that we're going to have to deal with. All right, so um, from there, let's look at one that's a little less scary because that's got four fractions. So let's not start out with one that's got four. Let's go with a little bit easier one than that. Let's say we've got maybe say a whole number five minus a two over an X all over a three plus a one over X. Okay, so not as many fractions, right? A lot less fractions. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, wherever there are fractions, there's a fraction here in the numerator, there's a fraction here in the, in the denominator. We're going to look at just those individual little tiny denominators and then come up with the least common denominator. Well, this one's an easy one because they're both X. So our least common denominator is X on this one. Okay, so this one was not a hard one. All right, which means then I'm going to multiply through the top by an X and I'm gonna multiply through the bottom by the X. So I'm gonna multiply this top by an X. Now, technically, since this is a fraction, I can turn X into a fraction by going X over one, but that's gonna clutter the problem up. So usually what I do is I just write it up kind of high so that I remember it's in the numerator. It's the same thing as X over one, but it's up high, okay? So that means I'm gonna take this X and distribute. So the X times the five, all right, well that, I didn't have a fraction to start with, so I'm not gonna have a fraction when I end. I'm just gonna have a five X right there. Go ahead and draw that big thing, minus sign. All right, now when I do X, which is in the numerator times two over X, Basically, hopefully you can just do a thing with your fingers and realize, oh, hey, these two X's are gonna cross out. So the only thing that's gonna be left is a two. So that two over X gets changed to just a two. So the fraction goes away, okay? Which is what we want. When we multiply through by the least common denominator, the fractions are gonna go away. So this fraction goes away, this one goes away. Then I also, to keep it everything balanced, I have to do it again at the bottom. Again, I'm gonna put that X up high so that I know it's X over one. I've got to distribute the X to the three. I have to distribute the X to the one over X. When I do three times the X, well, three is just a whole number. So three times X is just a three X. All right, now again, when I multiply this X, cause this is really X over one, it's in the numerator times one over X, these X's will cross out. I'm left with just that one that is sitting there. So then I'll have a plus one. All right, and then I look at this, relatively simple, binomial on top, binomial on the bottom, nothing factors out. So then on that one, that, that's the answer. That's the simplified version, okay? So this is obviously took kind of a long time because I was explaining and stepping them through it, all right? Once you get really good at multiplying through by this least common denominator, then it's a very, very fast procedure, okay? All right, now let's uh, do one where a little bit bigger, a little bit larger. Okay, so how about like an X over a Y plus a one over an X, and then all of that over a Y over an X plus a one over X. Okay, so now that we've done one with just two fractions, we've got one now that has a fraction in all four spots. Okay, now again, you're just looking at the individual denominators of the individual fractions, okay? Because I've got four fractions 
I'm looking at those individual denominators in order to be able to find my least common denominator. And again, this is a relatively easy one for finding that least common denominator. I've got to have one of everything. So I've got an X and then I've got a Y. So the least common denominator is going to be X, Y. Okay, so the deal is you got to be able to find that least common denominator to be successful at these. Okay, so I've got to multiply both the top and the bottom by that least common denominator. All right, and if you don't like curvy brackets, you can use square. It really doesn't make any difference. The least common denominator is always going to be need, need to be a fraction over one. I don't put it over one because it clutters it up. I just write it up high. Okay, then you distribute it to everything that is in that numerator because it's a set of parentheses. All right, let's go ahead and set the bottom up because we're going to do the exact same thing for the bottom. This bottom also has to be multiplied by the xy. I keep that xy in the top so that when I distribute, I can clearly tell what crosses out. Okay, now because I have four fractions initially, when I get done, I should have no fractions. I multiply through by the least common denominator, the fractions go away. Okay, so when I distribute here, all right, hopefully you can, like I just do like a little finger method, this y and this y crosses out. So I have an x times an x, so x squared. So for this term, that becomes an x squared. All right, the plus sign that is in that numerator comes straight down. All right, now I'm gonna distribute one over x times x times y, Again, this x times y is in the top. So that means those x's cross out. If we use our fingers, they disappear. One times y, it's just going to be a y. So then this entire fraction is gone and it is replaced with a y, which is what we want. We want to like multiply through by that least common denominator and get rid of fractions. All right, in the bottom, I'm going to cross out the x's. And then I'll have a y times a y, which is going to leave me with a y squared. Plus sign comes straight down. <clears throat> Again, this is going to be the exact same thing I had just a minute ago. <clears throat> the X's are going to cross out one times Y. This is going to give me a Y down here. Now, in this scenario right here, okay, I can go ahead and factor out a Y in the bottom, but it's not going to do me any good. All right, so, but you may not be able to see that right away. So the top is just an X squared plus a Y. I can't do anything with that. But technically, I could take out a Y on the bottom. And then that would give me a y plus one. All right, you do not have to do that, but you do have to always, if it factors, factor it and then check to see if something crosses out. Because in theory, I could have factored something out and then maybe that numerator would have been a y plus one. So then I could have crossed out the y plus ones. Okay, so for me on a written test, either one of those answers would be acceptable. All right, and then you got to play around with the My Math Lab to figure out which one they want. Do they want it all factored or do they want it like this? Okay, so either way, I'm actually pretty flexible.